we as I said we we have twenty thousand devices. Actually, it's not a lot, and the goal is to multiply this by at least a hundred. Uh, and we can do that because now with all what we call a uh, new space, we are able to do satellites that are much smaller, cheaper, um, and that can do at least the same performances. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the IoT for All podcast presented by IoT for All, the number one publication and resource for the Internet of Things. I'm your host, Ryan Chacon, and on today's episode, we have Alexandra Tisserand, the president of Kinesis. Uh, they are a company that focuses on being a satellite operator and global connectivity provider. So we're going to talk about leading use cases for space and IoT, why space is a place that you should be really focusing your attention on when it comes to the progression and growth of the IoT industry, challenges in the space, as well as advice for kind of um, utilizing satellite connectivity for an IoT solution. So all in all, fantastic episode that I think you'll get a lot of value out of. But before we get into it, any of you out there are looking to enter the fast growing and profitable IoT market, but don't know where to start? Check out our sponsor, Leverage. Leverage's IoT solutions development platform provides everything you need to create turnkey IoT products that you can white label and resell under your own brand. To learn more, go to iotchangeseverything.com. That's iotchangeseverything.com. And without further ado, please enjoy this episode of the IoT for All podcast. Welcome to the IoT for All podcast. Thanks for being here this week. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. What I wanted to do is kick this off by having you give a quick introduction about yourself uh, to our audience, so just background experience, things that, that will be relevant for our audience to know. Yeah, very good. So thanks for having me today. I am Alexander Tisserand. I'm the president of Kines, which is a new satellite operator and a connectivity provider dedicated to the IoT. So myself, I'm a, I have background as an IT engineer. I've worked for a French government, for a California startup. Um, and now I'm at Kines uh, uh, for, since the beginning, which means like five years ago now uh, in Toulouse in France. Um, and so we are a company, we are 62 people uh, now, uh, and we, uh, as I say, are a satellite operator. That means that today we have eight satellites flying in, the, in space, um, in low orbit, uh, and we have already commercial service available. And so we connect uh, uh, 20,000 objects uh, around the Earth, uh, thanks to our satellites. Um, and we raised uh, two years ago 100 million euros to uh, launch next year, 2023, uh, 25 new nano satellites to uh, improve the performances of uh, our constellation, our service, and so to lower the cost and to be able to have new markets uh, available for uh, space IoT. Fantastic. Yeah. So, well, let, let me ask you what what um what use cases do you all focus on? Is there any kind of particular use cases that have kind of led the way on from from your side of things? Yeah, well, um, you know, uh, on the surface of the globe, we only have like around 50% of the surface, which is covered by terrestrial networks, uh, which is fine for when you're human or when you have objects in cities or connected territories, but 85% of the surface is not connected. That includes, uh, of course, oceans, seas, desert, mountains, or whatever. And so our use case are mainly related to the fact that uh, for uh, some objects that are traveling around the world, they lack connectivity. So we will focus on uh, historically on uh, science and uh, wildlife monitoring, uh, 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 shipping vessels tracking, and now we're also uh, going onto logistics market uh, in large, um, from rail to containers to sea, uh, smart agriculture, we're also monitoring uh, um, energy infrastructures from pipeline to dams or water troubles, for example. So we have uh, many use cases that are uh, interesting for satellites. One thing we may add is that um, satellite connectivity is really complementary to terrestrial connectivity. And so we will not, for example, go on a typical terrestrial uh, IoT stuff like smart cities, um, sure. but we will more be into uh, uh, hybrid connectivity between terrestrial and satellite to follow uh, uh, things all around the world. Gotcha. Fantastic. So let me ask from from your perspective with the industry as a whole, um, why have we as an IoT industry now started to move to to space? So like, why is space such a such a, a important kind of element to the growth of the industry and use cases? Yeah. Well, one thing that is interesting is that we are not exactly moving towards space and. 
in the history of uh, IoT, actually, space was here before terrestrial networks. Uh, we come from a world, uh, the Argo system world, uh, where we had satellites back in the 80s, uh, uh, in 20, uh, 1980s, where we already have a few satellites that connect, uh, connected um, some uh, wild animals. Now, uh, it was for some scientists, and so it, were, it was a little uh, like artisanal stuff, uh, I would say. So now we're going to space because we can do in an industrial way. And this is really the, the, the shift that we are uh, uh, living right now. We, as I said, we, we have 20,000 devices. Actually, it's not a lot. And the goal is to multiply this by at least 100. Uh, and we can do that because now with all what we call a uh, new space, we are able to do satellites that are much smaller, cheaper, um, and that can do at least the same performances. And so when you have your infrastructure that is cost, uh, that costs a lot less, you are able to uh, lower your cost of connectivity and so to have new markets available uh, to space. So it's really this access to space that is cheaper uh, that mm -hmm. allows you to uh, uh, augment the connectivity surface uh, with satellites. Right, right. Well, yeah, I, I, that makes total sense. Do you, um, outside of what you're seeing in the space from a use case perspective, where do you kind of see, if we look, let's say, 6, 12 months down the road, maybe 18 months kind of thing, What, where do we see um, as more satellites get launched and more connectivity is available in the IoT space, what, what industries and use cases do you really think will kind of start to become bigger adopters of, of IoT? And those use cases, what would those be that will be able to be, or I guess be enabled um, with with the with the addition of going to space? Well, like I said, we have some of them, many of them actually. Um, logistics is really one of them, which is very interesting in uh, IoT. The only in space IoT, the only point is that uh, logistics industry is really tough on price, and so it's not easy to make money in this sector. Um, on the contrary, on the agriculture side or on the energy side, industry side, it's uh, something that is really uh, uh, interesting. For example, we have uh, industries that have several sites, industrial sites around the world, uh, like for oil or, or just for uh, water treatment. Uh, and these sites are not very well connected in, with industrial networks. And more than that, they don't want to depend on local networks uh, in case of uh, a trouble they don't they want to be able to communicate without a terrestrial network and so this is where uh, we typically are today focusing on uh, because these people have a real interest in the technology they also have enough money to put on uh, and so this is uh, the most viable use cases i see today fantastic so i wanted to ask so when you in the process of, of building the company and getting to where you are now, what have been some of the biggest challenges that you've come across um, from your side of things? Well, I would say there was two major. The first one has been to convince investors uh, to finance the, the company. I mean, 100 million euros is not a little deal. Um, and when you're talking about space, and it was three years ago almost now, uh, it was not uh, that common that it is now, I mean, in, in the minds of investors. And so we first had to convince investors that this is a, a good uh, project. And so to do that, we had a chance to have the French Space Agency with us uh, that helped us to validate technically the project and so to give confidence to investors. This was the, the financing part was really a hard one. And uh, unfortunately, we, we could uh, uh, do it uh, in time. And the second one is not exactly on the infrastructure uh, satellite side, but more on the commercial side, because um, we are in the process of uh, educating uh, new uh, players, new industries, new clients uh, 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 to the space IoT. I mean, a lot of them know IoT, but they're not, not very familiar uh, with the, the, the whole possibility of it and especially with the, the space IoT. So this takes time, this costs people and money, but this is uh, uh, totally necessary. So we put in place an organization to educate markets, animate an ecosystem, like in one month we are doing our first partner day, we gather all the ecosystem of manufacturers, device manufacturer, clients of Kines, so they can meet up and you know develop uh, some interesting partnerships. And so all this stuff has to be done so we're happy to do it, uh, though it, it takes a little time. 
Gotcha. Yeah, absolutely. So let me, and one other question I had about this kind of from a challenges perspective, when it, this is a little bit different from talking about the technology and the use cases and such, but just, just what did, I guess I'm trying to think of the best way to ask this question. When it goes from a company reaching out to you, like a potential client, turning them from a prospect to a client, going from that POC to full development in a amount of time that is relatively acceptable by the new client, what, what are some of the challenges that you all have seen making that happen, speeding up that time to basically the, the, the proof of concept, the pilot? Um, and what, um, what kind of advice do you have for companies out there looking to improve that process themselves and maybe struggle with it as well? Yeah, well, this is really a, a good question and a good challenge. Uh, it definitely takes time, always too much. Um, what is important is really to focus on uh, the customer uh, pain points. I mean, we're going, we're coming with a, a solution, a technical solution, so we can connect anything, anywhere. Okay, fine. But what is a client trying to solve? And it's just he wants to connect something but for, for what for location for for to, to know it better to uh, uh do predictive maintenance to uh, 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 uh prevent loss or whatever and so you have to understand that because at the end uh, the connectivity itself is just a part of the solution and so you have to partner with obviously the right device manufacturers but maybe also the good solution uh, integrator uh, uh, provider uh, if it's not you uh, and so already the you, you have to take time to understand it very well. And if at the end, maybe your connectivity is not the best, best for that, okay, that's fine. You you you, you don't lose your time and you, you will see another client for that. But don't go to that with a client that just looks interested in your solution technology right. because maybe at the end you will take like 12 months to do a POC and a lot of energy at the end and you will just see that, Okay, this is actually not the best solution for the problem he has. And so you just lose 12 months, half a, a people to, to do that all the time. So really understand the use case, understand the pain point and what you are bringing uh, as a solution. And don't hesitate to accept that the, your solution is not the best for this case. Absolutely. Yeah, um, it, it's been a very interesting kind of evolution for companies being able to do this better and better and better as they learn how to first bring in prospects, turn them into client that is willing to pay and, and work with them to build a proof of concept, and then proving the, the use case and the ROI out to get to a scale deployment um, and doing that in an amount of time that is acceptable within the organization that meets their deadlines that starts to, you know, solves the problem that they're looking to solve quickly. Um, but I think it is a challenge that a lot of companies still face and, um, it'd be interesting to kind of see how companies continue to work to solve and speed that up. And I think the availability of new technologies, um, you know, like we're talking about today, um, having the, the, the nano satellites being, uh, increasing connectivity, those kinds of things are just going to make this more and more accessible and, um, the chance of success higher. Exactly. I agree with that. Um, so as we look out, let's say, you know, for, for the next few years, what are you most excited about? What, what is the company kind of what's on the roadmap? What are you kind of focused on doing? And, and uh, what should we as an audience be, be focused on, um, or I, guess, I guess, paying attention to and, and looking forward to? Yeah, sure. Well, the, the first thing is that we are still in the deployment of our uh, new system, new concession. Like I said, we already have satellites, but we are launching 25 new ones next year from New Zealand. And in the meantime, we are uh, deploying a network of ground stations around the world. So we pass regularly on social networks where we are in terms of deployment. But yeah, to give you an example, I mean, the, the space constellation is really a big thing in the room uh, uh, for us. Like I just brought the, um, a, a model of the, the, the satellite C. It's just a, it's a one fifth uh, model. So it's not that big, you know. And uh, so at the end, the satellite is just uh, 20 by 20 by 40 centimeter. I mean, the, the yellow box is that size. So it's like a, a big shoe box. Um, so it's really interesting uh, tech stuff uh, exciting us today uh, in this uh, in this space domain. Uh, besides, we all have this uh, ecosystem animation that is taking a lot of time to us. And so, like I said, we have our first partner there next uh, next month. Uh, we just opened a subsidiary in the US uh, like uh, six months ago, and so we're deploying also in the US market. Um, so really looking forward to add a lot of uh, new players in our ecosystem. And so. 
2023 will really be we will really be the year of uh, uh, preparation of the launch of the constellation, both on the tech space side and on the uh, commercial and device side. Absolutely, yeah, it's um, it's an awesome space that you're in. I think what you have going on is is very interesting. Um, and I've been speaking to a bunch of companies recently who are getting into the satellite IoT space and really trying to make it more plausible for, for companies to have better access to that kind of connectivity to enable more use cases. So um, what you all have going on is, is, is awesome for the industry and I'm very excited to kind of stay in touch and see how it goes. Um, for our audience out there who wants to follow up, ask questions, learn more about what you're going, what, what you have going on, those kinds of things, what's the best way to do that? Well, just go you know, on our website or maybe just on LinkedIn. You just look for Kinase on LinkedIn and we post a lot of news there. And so just follow us and you can enter in contact with us whenever you want. We are quite reactive to do that. So. Perfect. Well, really appreciate your time. Um, this has been a great episode. Thank you so much for kind of talk, com coming on and sh sharing some of the insights that you have. Um, look forward to getting this out to our audience and would love to have you back at some point in the future. Sure. We will. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching that episode of the IoT for All podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, please click the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to hit the bell notification so you get the latest episodes as soon as they become available. Other than that, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.